Volvo continues to refresh their whole model range and the next one on the list is the new V60. This is already the second generation of that car and Volvo themselves call it the new premium sporty estate. And today we're going to have a closer look how sporty and how much premium that car is. Our test car, the Volvo V60 T6 Inscription, is featuring a 2-liter 4-cylinder petrol engine and that offers 310 horsepower, 400 newton meters of maximum torque and is combined as standard in that car with an 8-speed automatic gearbox and all-wheel drive. And that together really is more than enough power for that car. Um, you can really drive the car quite sporty and this engine accelerates this car in only 5.8 seconds from 0 to 100 km per hour. Uh, top speed is 250 so I think that really works well but there is one thing I don't like so much um, because you can feel the revs of the car when driving fast. For instance when you're a motorway um, you can really feel that you're driving in high revs um, which is something where I would say I do prefer um, the six cylinder engines which are not available for that car a bit more because they're I think they have more culture but that's just my personal feeling because very important is the engine is very well insulated so you will not really hear the engine it's more a bit like a feeling but um, as said with 310 horsepower in that car that's more than sufficient There will only be three different engines available when the new V60 will hit the market. These are one petrol and two diesel engines. The diesel engines inside of the so-called D3 and D4 model will deliver 150 or either 190 horsepower. The petrol engine, which is the car we're driving, the T6, that'll offer 310 horsepower and a maximum torque of 400 newton meters. Very important to know is that only the big T6 comes as standard with the 8-speed automatic gearbox as well as with all-wheel drive. Both of the diesels, they come with a 6-speed manual gearbox and front-wheel power. There will be more engines available in the future for the V60 and very important, there will be some electrified engines as well, the so-called plug-in hybrids. We want to know how much sport is inside of this new V60 and I have to say that you can really drive the car on one end very comfortably I'm very quiet. On the other hand, you can, I would say, let's have some fun with the car um, because with 310 horsepower, there's more than enough power to let the car fly. Um, with the all-wheel drive and a, a very nice suspension, the car really fits well on the track. And um, so I, I can say with the steering, which is very precise and very direct, you can really have some fun with that car. So I would say, yes, there is sports inside of this premium sports estate. If you want to talk about a sporty estate, of course, the look of the car has to be sporty as well. And so let's have a look at the layout and the design of the new V60. Looking at the front of the car, of course, that Volvo as well features the new so-called waterfall design grille here. But the whole car, when you look at it, it looks a lot more flat, a lot more down to the road as we normally know that from Volvo estates. And to give that look the extra kick, we have this very thin um, headlamps here, of course, with daytime running lights in Tors Hammer design and we have them featuring full LED as standard by the way. And to give the car a more sporty look we have these extra air intakes down here and we have these air intakes here at the side and that press the car really close to the road and of course now we can say from the front that's a sporty estate. The new Volvo V60 features the typical Volvo long bonnet which drops to the front and that really is a typical thing for a Volvo today. But more important to give the car a bit more of a sporty look is the car has grown by more than 12 centimeters in length so now it's 4 meters 76 long and more important to make it even look 
better is the car um, height has dropped by nearly six centimeters to one meter 42 and that makes the proportions of that car to give him the really the the kick um, regarding to sportiness um, you can have up to 20 inch alloys for the new v60 we have mounted here 19 inch uh, a very nice detail regarding to the design is this line here which really gives you an extra extra impression extra push to these wheel arches and i think that makes the car look more sporty but very important for the whole impression of the car are two lines one is the roof line that drops slightly to the rear and the other one is this window line that comes up here and that that together with this cut over here gives the car push forward so i think that's what we want when we talk about a sporty estate a typical Volvo estate design element are these very pronounced shoulders here. And what I like is that line starts here and it ends up right here into the taillights. And these taillights are typical Volvo as well because they're going up to here. And that is something you won't find with so many cars. When you look at the rear of the car, the car really stands very solidly on the road. That gives it a sporty look again. And something I really like is the exhaust element down here because this one here is a real exhaust. What I really like with the V60 here is what I do like with all the other new Volvo models and this is the material, the mixture of the materials and the craftsmanship. Um, in our car we do have a bicolor leather um, trim here and that really looks so beautiful and so, so nicely made um, this is I would love to say I have found something where I can say oh this this doesn't work well but in this car it's really absolute a pleasure to touch and to look at all the stuff which you find in here The new V60 now also has the typical upright touchscreen as the central operating element. The 9-inch screen controls navigation, phone, radio and almost all vehicle settings. The optional head-up display not only supplies the most important driving information, it also warns the driver in dangerous situations. Talking about space of the V60, the car has grown a lot. So about 12 centimeters in length it has shrinked a bit regarding to the height but you can really feel that you have about 10 centimeters more wheel space inside the car so as a even as a tall driver you re really sit very comfortably inside of the car and you do have more than enough space the only thing is i would say as a tall driver i wouldn't order this big glass roof because as you can see that runs directly straight above my head so that means if i wouldn't have that i would have have about two three centimeters more head space which would make my drive a bit more comfortable uh, but very interesting is that i can sit behind me um, i have more than enough space in front of my knees there um, but the only thing there is there the sunroof really makes the difference because i have to say that i would love to have more about two three centimeters more there um, to re really sit sit comfortably there um, but on the other hand i can sit behind me in this middle-class estate. Talking about an estate means, of course, we have to talk about the boot size. And that car here offers you 529 liters of maximum boot capacity with the rear seats up. If you fold them down, that incre increases up to 1,441 liters. But very important for both numbers, that includes that small bit down here. Uh, but something that I really like with the car is that, because that splits the boot in half. And that is very practical if the boot is not completely full, because nothing will roll around. Very important is if you order a car like that, have a closer look regarding to the to the colors because with, the, with this light interior here, that looks very nice. But as you can see, we met some bad experiences with it. So it's quite, let's say, sensitive. But overall, I think a reasonable size boot. The boot size of the Volvo is competitive. 
But with 495 to 1500 liters the BMW 3 Touring, as well as the Audi A4 Estate with 505 to 1510 liters is performing a little better when it comes to the maximum size with the rear seats fold down. Our test car, the Volvo V60 T6 with 310 horsepower petrol engine, should take an average 8.8 .8 liters per 100 km driven um, regarding to the new uh, measurement system which is called WLTP. Uh, but I have to say we didn't reach that kind of a number. During our test drive our car took between 11 and 12 litres per 100 km driven but we have to say of course we didn't do a standard drive. We were on the motorway quite fast, we did some stops, turnaround stops and so on, so typical for filming. Uh, but on the other hand it's still far away from what even this new system says it should take. The new V60 offers a variety of driver assistance and safety systems. Already the trim level Momentum offers the city safety system, a cruise control, active seat belts and many more as standard. The list of optional systems is long. For instance, semi-autonomous driving up to 130 km with pilot assist. But also a 360 camera, a rear cross traffic alert or parking assistant are available. The car we're driving with a trim level inscription um, starts at a base price of 53,050 euros here in Germany and the car comes quite well equipped so it offers as standard uh, traffic sign recognition, it offers as standard electrical seats, climate control and a lot of other stuff but if you really want to have a premium estate you have to put some extras in and that costs extra. So our test car, as we're driving it, with all the equipment we do have, which is fully equipped, that costs you about 20,000 euros more than that. The entry level model of the V60, trim level Momentum, as the so called D3 with its 150 horsepower diesel, starts at 40,100 euros in Germany. The competitors in the premium segment are on similar levels. At Audi, the A4 Estate with a 2 litre 150 horsepower diesel starts at 38,650 euros. The brand new 194 horsepower C220 as a T model is offered by Mercedes from 43,994 euros onwards. And the competitor from Bavaria, the BMW 318D Touring, starts at 39,600 euros. That was our test drive with the brand new Volvo V60. And the question was how much sportiness and how much premium we're going to find in that car. And I have to say that car not only looks very sporty and dynamic, you can also really drive that car the way you want, even if you want to do, push it a bit more to the limits. On the other hand, when we talk about premium, the only thing you really have to do is look inside the car. The craftsmanship as well as the materials like the leather are absolutely fabulous and I think very well made. So it's an absolute pleasure to sit inside of that car. The only thing I can complain about with this car is the price because that car, as it stands here, costs you 74,400 euros here in Germany. But on the other hand, if you want to spend that money, you really get a very unique, very nice car, very sporty estate. And this is a car not everybody will drive.